Hey, what's going on? Shane at Shane Hubbard Fit, where we teach you how to lose weight without counting calories or doing exercise you hate. Today, we're gonna to talk all about pre and post workout nutrition. So if you're watching this video and you have pretty much everything else taken care of, you're in a calorie deficit or in a calorie maintenance, you've gotten your workouts down pat, you've got your nutrition down pat, you've got everything else figured out, this is that like 10% of information that can really help maximize the effectiveness of burning fat and building muscle. But if you don't have the big rocks already taken care of, like an effective workout program that doesn't get you injured or a nutrition program that you can sustain whether you're trying to lose weight or even maintain weight, then I would focus on that first and then come back to this video once you've gotten all that stuff taken care of. So if you have gotten all that stuff taken care of, here are some tips that you can use for pre and post workout nutrition. Let's go ahead and start with pre workout nutrition first. When it comes to pre workout nutrition, what you really want to try to maximize is the quick digestibility of the meal that you're having, right? You don't want to be in the gym working out, doing sit ups or doing any kind of exercise and feel like you've got a stomach full of food. Okay. That's not only an uncomfortable feeling, but it's just going to distract you from your workout and it's not going to be an effective way about going about your nutrition. The other thing that I want to keep in mind is that you don't necessarily have to have a pre-workout meal. Here's an example. Let's say you have breakfast around 8 a.m. and you're planning on training at 11 a.m., so about a three hour difference. That's enough time in between your first meal and your workout to not have to eat anything else in between. So don't feel obligated to have a little something before your workout because maybe you've read on the internet or you've been told that you have to have a pre-workout meal. Your breakfast in this scenario would essentially be your pre-workout meal. Then you would go on with the, the rest of your day and have your post-workout meal and so on. So you don't necessarily have to have a dedicated pre-workout meal. If you've eaten in the last two to three hours, you'll be fine. So let's go ahead and talk a little bit about the composition of these meals. If you really want to maximize how the food we eat before our workouts affects our workouts, here are some quick tips. So a general good rule of thumb is that we want the meal that we consume before our workout to be relatively fast digesting, right? We don't want it to sit in our stomach for too long. So there's two ways that we can maximize that. We can increase the carbohydrates that we consume before a meal. We can keep our protein immediate to small amount and we can also decrease our fat content by a little bit as well. And here's why. Protein slows down digestion. It's important to have some protein before your workout to help reduce the breakdown of muscle mass, although carbohydrates in a high amount can also do the same thing. And it's also important to keep fat low because fat slows down digestion. So it's not that we don't wanna have any fat, it's that you just wanna have a little bit of it. So a classic example of this might be like chicken breast and white rice, right? That's pretty standard you know, kind of bodybuilding type pre-workout meal. Now, by no means do you have to have it that way, but that's kind of a classic example of a pure carbohydrate source and a high amount and a moderate to low amount of protein. If you wanted to go the protein shake route, you could also do that. You could throw some fruit in there with some protein powder, and then you could throw in, you know, almond milk or whatever liquid you want to use, and that would also work. Now let's talk a little bit about the timing beforehand. So how soon before a workout should you have your meal? I like to let this be something that my clients determine because they know their bodies better, but kind of as a general recommendation, if you're gonna have a solid food meal, probably anywhere between one to two hours before your workout, all right? That's a good rule of thumb. Now, if you're having a liquid, like a you know, protein shake, let's say, 45 minutes to an hour is probably plenty of time. All right, so let's talk a little bit about pre-workout supplementation now. Now, I personally don't use a lot of pre-workout supplements, but I have in the past, so I'm gonna go ahead and give you some advice on these. So the very first thing that I get a question about is should or should I not take a pre-workout supplement? And here's a couple of very simple rules. If you enjoy taking a pre-workout supplement and it helps you get your workout done, then I'm all for it, right? But there's nothing necessarily magical about a pre-workout supplement, all right? Other than a lot of them, what they'll do is they'll try to decrease fatigue and try to increase energy. All right, so that could be obviously a very beneficial thing when you're working out, but you don't have to take one if you don't wanna take one. Now, if you are going to take a pre-workout supplement, I would try to be smart about the kind that you're going to take, all right? Take a look at the nutrition labels and just do a little bit of education on what it is that you're actually consuming. I've had 
clients in the past who have taken a pre-workout and their skin starts to turn a light purple color. That's not a good thing. So you have to be a little bit mindful and, you, and sometimes you just have to try some pre-workouts to see if they work. I'll do a, a different video when I've done more research on pre-workouts than I'll cover here in this video, but I just wanted to make sure you understand that you do not have to take a pre-workout supplement, but if you are taking one and you enjoy it, that's totally cool. So when you look at the studies that are done on BCAAs, which is, stands for branched chain amino acids, there's really no added benefit to taking them if your protein intake for the day totals amount that is going to be good for your goals. So for example, if you need to eat 150 grams of protein a day in order to build muscle mass or at least maintain muscle mass, and you get that every single day, then taking a BCA supplement isn't going to improve your ability to build muscle or even retain muscle. Now that doesn't mean you shouldn't or you can't take a BCA supplement, but if you don't really have the money for it or you don't wanna spend the money on it, you don't have to take it to help promote muscle building. Sometimes when I work out, I like to take a BCA supplement just because it helps me recover a little bit better. And that doesn't always happen, but that happens sometimes. And it's also just nice to drink something that kind of cuts back on the fatigue that I'm feeling during my workouts. If I've had a really stressful day or I've had a really long day and I'm just not feeling my workout, I'll throw some BCAs in a cup, I'll drink that during my workout and it usually kind of levels out the playing field. All right, let's move on to post-workout nutrition. I would say that when it comes to pre and post-workout nutrition, I, got a, I get a lot more questions about post-workout nutrition. So let's go ahead and cover that first and foremost. The biggest question I get about post-workout nutrition is, do I have to eat within 30 minutes to an hour after my workout? And the answer to that is no, all right? There used to be this idea that there was an anabolic window, that you had to eat in a certain amount of time after your workout. When there have been a meta-analyses done, and the meta-analysis is basically where you take a bunch of different studies on the same topic, and you look for commonalities between those two and patterns, what they found is, is that if you equate for protein, meaning that if you keep protein at the level that you should be in taking it for your goals, it doesn't matter when you eat that protein. All right, so like, let's say that I need 170 grams of protein a day. It doesn't matter when I get that protein so long as I get my total amount. Now I have also read some studies where there's a marginal, so a very small advantage to getting the amount of protein at certain times. And this mostly has to do with recovery. So if you're the kind of person who's taking care of all of the big rocks and you really wanna start maximizing your, your recovery so you can get better workouts, then pre and post workout nutrition might be a little bit more of a concern for you. But that still doesn't trump that you should be getting a total amount of protein every single day and when you get that protein doesn't really matter that much. Now, that being said, if you are a two meals kind of person and you need a 170 grams of protein a day, that's somewhere in the neighborhood of 80 to 85 grams of protein per meal. That's a lot of protein. And if you're finding it difficult to consume that much protein at those meals, it might be better to space them out over a couple of meals, like maybe three meals and a snack or something like that. So what I've typically seen done with my clients is, is that they'll usually have three to four meals or three to four uh, intakes of protein, separate intakes of protein to help cut back on the amount they have to have per serving. So that might be just kind of a natural consequence of trying to get more protein and spacing it out so that you don't have to get as much in a single serving. All right, so now that we've talked about post-workout nutrition when it comes to protein, what about carbs and fats? So carbs, you know, they can be high or low. It doesn't have to be anything specific. Uh, fats, it can be high or low. Uh, a lot of the reasons in the past for recommending low fat after a workout is because we were so concerned as a industry of making sure that our clients were getting that post-workout nutrition window, what's called uh, the anabolic window in, in our circles anyway. And what we found is, again, that, that the timing is not super important. Now, if you are trying to get a certain amount of protein per day and eating more fat delays your next serving of protein, that might interfere with your total amount of protein per day. So you kind of have to play with it. The thing that I've seen work the best for my clients is a moderate to high amount of protein after a workout, a moderate to high amount of carbs, and a low to moderate amount of fat. So here's a good example, kind of using the example we used before. Chicken breast, white rice, and avocado. And that gives you your proteins, your carbs, and your fats. Now obviously you can mix and match that however you want, but that's the idea is that you want a little bit of fat, you want some carbs, and you want some protein. All right, so now let's talk a little bit about post-workout supplementation. So it used to be believed that you had to have a protein shaker, you had to have a fast digesting protein source in order to maximize your post-workout meal. 
And again, that's no longer true. If you're somebody who doesn't already use protein powders and you've been considering getting one because of this whole idea that you need a fast digesting protein, don't worry about it, okay? You don't have to switch to supplements. You can still eat your whole food protein. In fact, you don't need supplements whatsoever. They just supplement your nutrition. Now, if you're going for convenience and you wanna get more protein in, sure, there's nothing wrong with a protein shake. And there's nothing wrong with consuming whey protein after your workout, but there's really no advantage to doing so unless it helps make you more adherent to getting your total amount of protein per day. So again, you don't necessarily have to use a fast digesting protein source, but it might be useful for you and what you're trying to achieve when it comes to your total protein intake per day. All right, so that is my video of today on pre and post workout nutrition and supplementation. If you have any specific questions that you want to direct my way, don't forget to reach out to me. You can put it in the comment section down below. And before you go, if you don't mind hitting that thumbs up button so this video can reach more people, I would really appreciate it. And as always, I would highly recommend that you subscribe and notify yourself with that little bell when I put out new videos so you can get more content every single week. All right, thanks a ton for watching my video today. I will see you in a future video.